everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's video, I wanna talk about the scandal that's recently happened with Colleen, but I don't wanna get into the grooming allegations. Instead, I wanna ask the hard questions that I think no one has asked so far, which is, how do we forgive Colleen? And the question isn't really about us forgiving the literal consciousness that is Colleen, because we don't know her. It's how do we forgive people in our life that do things the similar or the same way that Colleen has done them? She recently had a scandal in relation to some minors in her audience where there was like inappropriate behavior. Now she blamed it on being sort of a quote loser or somebody who was like homeschooled, somebody who's socially awkward, but she was in her 30s while she was doing this. Many years ago, I used to message my fans, uh, but not in a creepy way like a lot of you are trying to suggest. It was more of a loser kind of way where I was just trying to be besties with everybody. And I also wanted to have this picture in the background, the entire video, to let you know what I looked like and what age I was when this shit started. Basically, I, like I said, got reached out to by a lot of people that were in this group chat with me, the weenies. And DMs have been starting to be leaked by members in this group chat um, because they're all seeing how inappropriate it was now. And I just want to read through a couple of them, okay? So, as we're aware of the infamous ones that are whenever I was 15, 14, 15, and Colleen, um, I wrote that I was having a QA, and a a YouTube Q&A, and Colleen Ballinger, the 31-year-old, comments and goes, Adam, you need questions for your Q&A? Are you a virgin? To a, a 14, 15-year-old. And then furthermore, it goes on and says, what's your favorite sexual position? What's your favorite position? So we're aware of that one, right? Colleen writes to the, the girls in the grip, tell me all your thoughts when you had your first periods, please and thank you, just randomly. Just randomly, of course. And then she goes, example, I thought I shit myself because the blood was so dark in my underwear. She would just come in randomly and say stuff like that to a lot of people who were very underage. There was one person that was younger than me in the grip and then we were all relatively the same age, right? I've been sharing my life online for over 15 years. I've poured my heart out to you and because of that I feel like I'm talking to my friends, but from the beginning of my career, I didn't really understand that maybe there should be some boundaries there. There were times in the DMs when I would overshare details of my life, which was really weird of me. I haven't done that for years, you see, because I changed my behavior and I took accountability. But that's not very interesting, is it? So let's go on the toxic gossip train. The locomotives fueled with hateful accusations. The toxic gossip train. Steamroll over someone's reputation. Toxic gossip train. Hop on board but close your eyes. Otherwise you'll realize that the train is made of lies. And that person you despise maybe didn't deserve to die. But hey, at least you're having fun. In all seriousness, I do think it's really important to hold people accountable for their mistakes. Um, you know, we should hope that everyone can learn from their mistakes and grow and change their behavior and be a better person. And this is something that I've always tried to do when I make mistakes, and it's something that I will continue to try to do. What? Oh, you don't care? Oh, okay. I thought you wanted me to take accountability, but that's not the point of your mob mentality, is it? No. Your goal is to ruin the life of the person you despise while you dramatize your lies and monetize their demise. So I can give a lot of leniency for people just out of high school, maybe 21, 22, having sort of similar relationships with people still in high school, because if you grew up in a town like I did, you kind of still knew people who were sort of graduating school. Maybe you were in your first, second year of college. But in this situation, it was like 14-year-olds and a 30-year-old plus. So we're really talking about a circumstance that is quite unnerving. And if you're like me, you do want to prioritize the care and protection of children, especially minors who are going through puberty, who are questioning, who are challenging, who are crossing boundaries, even that are like even boundaries that are unhealthy for them as minors. It is our job as adults to slow them down and say, I understand you think you're having a relationship with an adult right now, but this is inappropriate, right? Excluding family friends and big sisters, you know, big brother, you know, groups, mentorships. I understand all that thing. All those things can exist and be wonderful. But in this circumstance, I think it's clear that there was something so inappropriate happening, but so like less in your face that it caused it to sort of be ignored for a long time. 
So as the parents, we know like parents can get upset on behalf of their children. We know as community members, we can get upset on behalf of the children. What about the people who are close to Colleen? What about the people who were married to somebody like Colleen? What about the people who know a good side of Colleen? How do they make peace with the fact that their friend, their ex-wife, their wife, their girlfriend, their daughter had this inappropriate relationship with a minor. Now again, there wasn't anything technically sexual happening with the children, so I don't think it's a matter of us having to at least imagine a scenario that horrible, because I think it's pretty clear if she was actually engaging in sexual acts with the children, we could easily say like, okay, <laughs> that's even harder to forgive. What does it mean to forgive? And what does it mean to make a mistake? Right? So for this particular situation, and again, we're not exactly talking about Colleen, we're talking about the people in our lives who do these types of things, who have these kinds of relationships that are obviously so inappropriate, but here's the pattern I have found with these kinds of situations. Let's say a 25 to 30 year old who engages with a 14 to 17 year old. I find that in these circumstances, people have kind of literally lost their minds. I'm not creating an excuse, but I am looking for an explanation. What makes a grown person in their 30s turn to somebody half their age for companionship, friendship, or even a parasocial relationship? What is it that drives this human's brain to make this decision? So I've had circumstances in my life where I've seen people around me do these types of things, where I've seen people when I was in high school, I remember men in their 20s, 25, 26, having relationships with my friends who were 14 and 15, and the parents didn't think anything of it. So we recognize that there are bubbles in the world in which these kinds of relationships are sort of normalized. I wouldn't want that world to continue, and I don't think you do either, but we have to examine that certain bubbles aren't quite, uh, do we want to use the word evolved? <laughs> they aren't quite out of the assuming or the lifestyle in which minors can have relationships with adults. We are, and we have to like acknowledge that we are diverse, that the world doesn't operate the same, and that there are bubbles in which minor people are having relationships with adults, either as close friends or as sexual partners. And even though it icks me out and it icks you out, that doesn't mean that these things aren't normalized in those bubbles and therefore have to be sort of cultured out. When I was watching Colleen's apology video, I don't know that that's really what we should be calling it, her defense video, she obviously knew she was being a quote loser, but she didn't really take accountability for how that impacts the people around her. So again, you guys know I believe in consent more than anything. Consent has to be the forefront of our, um, I believe, philosophy in terms of how to sort of navigate uh, companionship or friendship or anything we're doing. Can this person consent? And that's a very hard question to answer because in certain bubbles, 15 year olds consent to driving cars, which are basically like possible killing machines. And in other bubbles, like minors are even married off and they're able to quote unquote handle that. But again, when we're talking about consent, we're talking about things like mental health and development. Does Colleen have the mental capacity to consent? I mean, she's admitting that she was in a state of mind in which she thought this was appropriate. And then she continues to be in a state of mind where she brings out a ukulele and apologizes in her weird defensive way. And so there's something to be said about her ability to consent. Now, again, we're not excusing the behavior because I'm a person who believes in consent enough that I would argue even if you didn't mean to do something and you're impaired, whether it's psychosis or drunk driving, you're still accountable for the things that your body did while you were under the influence. Though there is leniency that I think we can allow, which leads to forgiveness, to give people, an, a, a, give ourselves a deeper understanding of what makes people do things. So if you have somebody who went or underwent psychosis and they, um, I don't know, did something inappropriate, I could understand how you and I would be like, well, mental health is important and psychosis is a, it's a really distorted view of reality. And so I could understand why someone under psychosis would do X, Y, Z. I can do the same thing for drunk driving. I can do the same thing for mental health. I can do the same thing for a lot of things. Those people still need to apologize to the people they hurt, even if they didn't intend harm. So I understand that there is a line in which we can separate those people into categories and then the people who maliciously intend to hurt children, maliciously intend to hurt people when drunk, maliciously intend to hurt people by maybe even purposely becoming a person under psychosis or a person under substances or a person under 
a, a, a skewed state of mind to almost allow themselves the excuse of hurting people. These are all different kinds of people. So I think it's our responsibility if we're really being introspective and extrospective and we're asking ourselves, how do I make peace with these people existing around me? How do I make peace and how do I create a pathway for forgiveness? It has to start with why they're doing it. So with Colleen, I think she's obviously mentally challenged in a way that's unique to her brain. I don't think any conscientious adult in their 30s would react this way, nor do I think they would have engaged in that parasocial relationship with minors. I know even for me, I've been very strict that my Patreon, though it's a philosophy Patreon, is 18 plus because I cannot risk the responsibility of minors. I can't be responsible for your children. For me, I'm trying to create a safe space for adults to talk about philosophy, to explore ideas about the self, and to question their own existence without also interacting with minors. So see how I'm protecting two communities at the same time? I'm protecting the minors who might be watching me, even though most of my audience isn't underage, and I'm protecting the adults who are coming to have a safe space to talk about philosophy and pop culture without accidentally running into children. So again, we have to work as a community to create these spaces, but it's easier for someone like me, I think, because I am thinking about consent as the foundation for why I'm doing things. If Colleen isn't thinking about consent, she might just be thinking about how does this child who came into my life benefit me, which I hate to say it, but a lot of YouTubers, a lot of subset of celebrity end up gaining some sort of fame by utilizing their minor audience to promote and meme them and push their narrative out into the world because kids have more time on the internet and they fall in love and parasocial relationships, you know, end up building faster, I think, with minor audiences, which is why the biggest earning YouTube content creators are appealing to children. So I think without a doubt, those people are best incentivized to not only remain stunted in themselves, like Colleen is benefited by remaining stunted, remaining childlike, not outgrowing her audience because her audience is most likely to give her the most money. And the worst part is like on top of this, the parents who allow their children to become parasocially connected to Colleen are allowing that atmosphere to continue, which bring it back to our reality, our bubbles. You know parents like this. Like I said in high school, the parents of the girls I was friends with who would let their girls date men in their 20s were allowing them to date men in their 20s who were stunted. These men were not emotionally mature. These men were like children. And so the parents kind of justified it with, well, they're kind of like my teenage daughter. They relate to one another. And that should be a red flag in of itself. Colleen is in her 30s relating to 15-year-olds. This is why age gap relationships can be very unnerving to a lot of us. Because again, why are you in your 50s, Leonardo DiCaprio, you know, relating to people who are 24? Like, what are you relating to? And so I think there's something to be said about the yellow, red, orange flags that can occur when there's age gap friendships and relationships. Now, as somebody who loved adults growing up, had a lot of adult conversations, I'm really lucky that all the adults in my life had very strict boundaries with me. Even as a teacher, a uh, teacher, <laughs> even as a student in high school, I would want to be closer to my teachers and they would be like, Brittany, you are my student. Boundaries. Like, especially being neurodivergent, especially being needy, especially being like uh, suicidal, especially being somebody who was rejected from her conservative bubble because she was queer. I clung to those teachers that showed me any ounce of kindness. And those teachers were so responsible with how they handled me. They really encouraged me to be myself, but to go make friends my own age. They re- I remember distinctly one situation where the teacher was on a lunch break and I was on a lunch break. And I was like, can I come into the lounge with you and hang out with you? And he was like, absolutely not. You're a child, you're a student. I need to go hang out with my teacher friends. You need to go hang out with your friends. And I was like, okay. And I went and I really pushed and tried to make friends because I was homeschooled until I was 15. And then I had two years of public school and it was not easy, but it was something that I was encouraged to do by the adults who were very reasonable about the limitations and boundaries we had together. Colleen showed no responsibility in this regard, just zero responsibility. And I understand in some pockets of the internet, there are minors really going through things and you want to help and save them. But for the sake of that minor and for the sake of you, you need to create boundaries. So how do we in our personal lives give or allow a a pathway into forgiveness for people like Colleen, people like these men who are dating these minors, 
people in our lives who don't have their own boundaries. And I think it's about boundaries starting with yourself. You yourself have to have that relationship with your own values. How do I feel when an adult makes this decision? I personally feel icky. And then I always ask the person, like, what was the reasoning? And if push came to shove, are you willing to take accountability for the type of inappropriate relationship you had with this minor, even if it wasn't sexual? Are you willing to hold yourself accountable in a real way? And I think if they are, then we can have conversations. If they aren't, then I'm really going to have strict boundaries about my interactions with that person. Now, with that said, would I trust Colleen with children? No. I really wouldn't, not because I think she's a groomer or a pedophile, but because I think she's inappropriate and doesn't have boundaries because she has shown time and time again that she doesn't have the skill set or the forethought or the introspection to think about other people in uh, in a way that tells me I can feel safe around her with children. And I'm very strict and maybe my standard is too high, but I really am very particular about who gets to be around children solo, not around other adults in a room. I'm not saying Colleen can't be around children in a room, but obviously, right, obviously, she can't be trusted to form healthy relationships with minors. So she can't be trusted around my children. And again, I don't have children, but as a person who grew up with 10 kids, as a person who has a history of extended family crossing sexual or inappropriate boundaries with children, we are very protective of children. And I am not willing to... Um, I'm not willing to take the side of the perpetrator against the child. Like I will always choose the child. I will always defend the victim. So for me, it has to be very clear that Colleen can't be given sort of any more extension of empathy or a chance at the risk of a child. So again, we're again, Colleen or people like her, I'm not willing to allow them back in at the risk of a child. I am willing for them to take a path in which they are allowed to be in the group of adults, the group of people who can defend themselves. Maybe my standard is too strict, but there's a reason why my farm brother, the one with four kids, allows me as a sibling to watch his kids because they know I will like fight dragons for those kids. They know I will... I will protect those kids at the cost of every adult in the room if any adult is ever inappropriate with them. Because again, this isn't about the ego of the adult. This is about the safety and sanity of a child. Like over anything else, we should be protecting children. So for Colleen to make this ukulele video, this alleged apology or whatever you want to call it, for her not to even think about the damage she's done to children is so strange to me. Now, with that said, the child in question who's now an adult might be somebody who is drama fishing, might be somebody who's trying to gain fame, might be someone in their adult life who's been raised on YouTube and taught like this is how you get fame. But that is their journey, and I'm not here to judge that process, though a lot of people have. A lot of people are comparing the victim in the situation to the perpetrator. And I think that, obviously, if you're in the YouTube game, your, your goal is money, fame, and clout. So if you're in the YouTube game and that's the particular YouTube bubble you're in, then that is going to be your goal. But I don't think that still gives... Uh, I don't think that lessens what Colleen did to this minor. I don't think that lessens what she did even if his uh, relationship with it is to make money off of it, I don't think that changes how inappropriate she was through the process. And I know a lot of people will say like, well, the teenager pushed, the teenager did this, the teenager, the teenager is still a teenager. So again, I think we're having a misunderstanding of what it means to forgive, to acknowledge, to say, okay, we understand it's complicated and nuanced and layered. How do we forgive people like Colleen in our lives? We start by creating boundaries. And then we have a relationship with what forgiveness means. It doesn't mean allowing her back into your life. It means allowing yourself to make peace with what happened and moving on and trying to stop it from happening again. All right, I think that's what I wanted to say. Please leave your comments in the sections down below. Specifically, I'd like to hear from people who have had this circumstance happen and how they've dealt with it. I know for myself, the adults I know that have had inappropriate relationships with minors, whether it was sexual or not, I am hesitant to trust them around children. I definitely have a huge boundary with them. I definitely am always watching them. I'm definitely always wondering, like, was this a mistake you made in your 20s or is this a pattern you're going to have for the rest of your life? But I'm open to forgiveness. I'm open to having relationships with people. I just want to make sure that ultimately the children are being protected over the ego of the adult, over the relationship or safety of the adult. I want to make sure the children are being protected. 
So again, I'd love to hear from you if you've had this happen, but I am trying to challenge myself with forgiveness, with the nuance layered um, challenge of the situation. Because it is, again, it's kind of unnerving, the idea that adults don't know their boundaries and they're going to cross it with my children or the children of the world. Like that frustrates me. So if you have gone through this and you've learned to forgive, please leave your wisdom down below. Okay, talk to you guys soon. Bye. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah. Sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 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 dun.